Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new here, my name is Joni Young and I'm an acrylic artist and instructor. Today I'm excited to show you all how to paint this house with lots of green around and sunlight and a cute little white picket fence in the foreground. Uh, this is an acrylic, it's a fun landscape for all levels, so you can all follow along with me step by step. So let me just go over the canvas I'm using first. This is an 11 by 14 double primed and stretched canvas. I've got a one inch oval mop brush that I'm going to be starting the painting with, and I've got the following colors. I'll also have a full list of those below this video in the description box for you. Uh, blue turquoise, diazine purple, hunter green, neon cool yellow, light olive green, neon warm yellow, and titanium white. So what I want to do is create a glaze or filter of sunlight over top of all of the, the bushes in the background. So I'm going to start this painting a little differently from how I normally approach my paintings. Um, so this is just something new for you guys to learn and this is actually a really, really fun way to approach your paintings. So I'm going to start off with um, the trees here in the background. I'm going to have my horizon line right about here. We're going to apply the bushes trees using hunter green, doxazine purple, and light olive green first. I'll add a little bit of grass here in the foreground as well. I'll dry it off. Then what I'm going to do is filter or glaze over with my warm yellow and my cool yellow. Then we'll work on the house. Then we're going to come in and add our big tree that goes in front of the house. And then finally, our picket fence that is closest to us in the foreground. Okay, so if you guys have any questions uh, and you're unclear about how we're approaching this painting today, don't hesitate to leave a comment or question below this video. I'm going to start with this one inch oval mop brush. If you're curious, this is the Princeton uh, by the Princeton uh, company. It's a really nice brush to use. Um, you don't want to get these brushes wet uh, for this next step. So you just want to apply your paint by uh, tapping into it. So I'm just going to tap, 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 just pull in a little bit. So a lot of people beginning to paint think they need way more paint than what they actually need. And you know, the reason why you want to tap to load your brush is to keep that poofy shape because that's what you want to take advantage of to create those fun looking bushes and trees. I'm also going to tap into a little bit of that hunter green. So we've got a little bit of both. And I'm just going to start right about here. All you want to do is just tap, tap, tap. These brushes are so much fun to use. So we will be having our house right in here. Um, so you don't have to worry too much about uh, perfecting your trees back there. They're gonna mostly be covered up and just uh, filtered over and looking a little bit faded and blurry in the background. We're going to bring some of those trees up a little bit higher. And notice how I'm leaving some spaces in between, so I'm making them see through. That helps us have that light, the sunlight filtering through, giving us some more um, highlights. I'm going to add a little bit more. Don't forget about the edges of your canvas. You want to cover those up as well. And I'm just going to tap in here too. That way we've got that dark underpainting for when we need to come over with our lighter colors and our big tree as well. And 
we'll be having that fence right in here. We need to have the dark shadowed bushes behind in order for our white picket fence to really show up and stand out. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is tap into, without washing my brush off, if you have a really saturated brush and you're losing the poofy shape, mine is starting to lose that. Sometimes you can get it back by tapping quite a bit, but it's always a good idea to have another one on hand. I've got this guy here if I need to, which I probably will. Okay, I'm gonna start coming in with this light olive green and tapping in over top. Just gonna start building up to that nice color. That nice color that we want before we add our, our sunlight. I also wanna just kind of pull back and forth here for some grass. And we can go ahead and start adding all over here as well. Again, I'm going to cover up some of this with a house um, just in case. A little bit showing and it's always just good practice too. I like showing you guys a lot in each video. Even though some of my videos are shorter than others, I always want to make them really thorough. So you guys, you know, I'm not like taking sections out of my videos. I show you, I even show you sometimes when I make mistakes and how to fix that, because that's really an important part of learning. We all make mistakes. I'm just pulling my brush like this for some grass. Use that last little bit of olive green. The paints I'm using today, I should mention, they're all Liquitex Basics Acrylics. Um, the neon colors here are by Holbein. So what I'm gonna do next is dry this layer off. I'm gonna come in with my next layer of highlights. I'll dry it off again, and then I'm gonna come in with my filter. Okay, so I've got the painting all dry now, and I'm gonna be taking a clean and dry one inch oval mop brush, just like the one I used previously. And I'm gonna build up some more highlights. Now for this next layer of highlights, I'm gonna be going into my white just a little bit. And I like to use titanium white. Um, I think that it makes for a really nice uh, highlight and you can tint other colors. You can use it to tint um, and make lots of beautiful pastel tones. Uh, but if you want something a bit more transparent, I would recommend going for a zinc white. Okay, so just a little bit of white, olive green. Keep in mind, the acrylic paint dries a little bit darker than what you see here. So if you want to keep it this nice, bright color, then you want to just be a little bit more generous with your white. Okay, so I'm going to start at the back here. Now, how I'm applying my highlights is partially over the unpainted canvas and I'm partially over the treetops and all the leaves. I like to take the time to show you guys how I'm loading my brush each time too, because it's really important. A lot of people are asking all sorts of questions lately, like how do you keep your mop brushes from um, clumping and you know all the paint getting all globby and <laughs> well it's really important right to not overload your brushes and keep that poofy shape it's also important to apply minimal pressure and it'll come here and add a little bit here in the foreground we're gonna have our, our little path here of course and I'll go in but I think those look quite pretty, don't they? I'm going to just continue doing the same thing, loading my brush the same way, and applying some light little taps here and there. So what I like to do is 
kind of work in little areas here and then move on to another spot. So you always have those highlights in one area and shadows in another. If you overshadow or over highlight any one area in your painting, um, you're going to be left with a really flat, what they call flat looking painting. So nothing's going to stand out or look 3D. So they really need each other. They're like best friends. They go together. Highlights and shadowing. You can't have one without the other. I'm going to take just a little bit more, be just a little bit more generous here with my uh, light olive green. And then I'm going to actually go into, I'm going to pull in a little bit of my hunter green. And I'm going to add that here. I'm just going to tap a little bit, kind of tap, get just like a little bit of a texture going for some grass. And what this hunter green adds uh, is a different temperature. So it's giving us a bit of more of a, a cool temperature. And it's nice to have both warm and cool temperatures in your paintings. And that's not saying that, you know, you have to have both, but it sure makes for um, a nice uh, atmosphere in a painting. It creates a nice mood when you have that balance. Let's tap a little bit more right back in here. Got to have those cool shadows. A little bit here and there. And once we add our, our fence posts, our little picket fence, we can come in and add some flowers, maybe some rose bushes, whatever kind of flowers you want, or you can just leave it uh, with just the, the white fence if you want. You just heard me rinsing out my brush. So this is what it looks like when you get your mop brushes wet. Um, they're still useful for some things I'm going to show you once they're wet like this. Um, you can create some sweeping, draping looking moss and or like vines or weeping willow types of trees and foliage. Um, so there are going to be some kind of falling here in the distance on the, well, on the other side of our big, big tree. So I'm going to add that right now. I'm just going to take a little bit of both of my greens, a little bit of white and just to the tip of my brush like this. And I'm just gonna start tapping like this, holding my brush kind of straight up and down like this, letting that light peek through. You can also kind of just gently pull a little bit if you want. And I'm gonna go in and add a little bit of shadowed areas here. Don't forget about the very top of the canvas. I always come back after when I'm finished a painting and, and go over the top if I need to and paint the sides. I've got a few videos demonstrating how, because the question I get asked quite a bit actually is how to um, take care of the, the sides of my paintings. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it like this. I'm gonna dry this painting off and then we're gonna come in with the fun um, filtering over possibly some more highlights if needed. We'll see. I'm just going to use my number 10 flat brush to um, glaze or filter over. So you can, there are glazing mediums out there. Um, what they'll do is thin your paints um, without taking any saturation or color out of them. Um, but I find just using a little bit of water and some really good quality paints works just fine and you don't have to spend the extra money on on the glazing mediums. However, I like to offer both and let you guys know different options out there. Um, so what I want to do is take a little bit of my neon yellow. Now this is that, you know, highlighter <laughs> yellow. This is the cool lemon luminous neon yellow by Lemon Yellow by Holbein. I have a little bit of water in my brush and you can see it, see it's still super vibrant. 
and I'm going to start glazing over and you're going to see how much light that we create by adding this little glaze and filter. Now this is that cool yellow, so it's going to make our cool green stand out even more. You don't have to put it over the entire painting, however you could if you wanted. Um, and I'm just going to add a little bit more in here. Here, I want to have that sunlight filtering through. It still will dry a little bit darker, so I might come back after and add some final highlights using a little bit more of my white. And I'm going to add a little bit on the edge here. The edges, the bottom left and the bottom right. And then, you know, you can also add a little bit of white here and there if you want to bring back just a little bit more of the sky. And then of course we've got that warm yellow. I'm gonna take just a little bit of white and I'm gonna add it right in here. This is gonna be less see-through. Just adding a little bit of this warmth here and there is going to give us a nice balance. And come down here. And I'm going to start working on the path a little bit. So I'm going to take my purple, my warm yellow, and white. And just pull lightly back and forth. I can make brown by mixing these colors together. Just half a little half leaving in here. Maybe a little bit of white in there, a little bit of light olive green. Okay, so now for the next step, I'm actually going to be adding some sun rays in here before I add my big tree and my house. I'm going to be using this same brush and I'm just going to take some white, white and water. So <laughs> it's hard to see because I'm adding that white onto a white palette. Get rid of these loose little hairs. And I'll just start come right here, line my brush up right from the middle of the canvas and bring some pretty sun rays in. It's never a bad idea to add some sun rays to a painting. Just 
super easy to do. I always recommend using a flat brush. Though sometimes you see me using a filbert. Filberts are going to be a little bit trickier for beginners because they have a round end to them. And you might get some curvy looking <laughs> sun rays because of that. So if you're just a beginner, go for the flat brush. Just a gentle little pull and sweep. You can bring your sun rays down as far as you want. I'm going to create, just add a few that are a little bit heavier with paint. So just less, a little bit less water. I make some of them brighter here. Not all of them, but see, I've got lots on this side. So I just want to pick a few that are going to be a little bit brighter. So they don't all look the same. Add a little bit of light hitting the grass right there. And I'll just lightly add a little tiny bit of white there. Kind of looks like morning fog um, and the sun breaking through in the, you know, early in the morning. That's the feeling I'm getting from this so far. I wonder what you guys are, uh, if you guys are thinking the same. Okay, so I'm gonna add the house now. I'm gonna switch brushes. I'm gonna continue using a flat brush because it's got the nice square into it, which is really helpful when you're painting a house that needs some straight edges. I do wanna mention though that I don't get too um, overly concerned about uh, making everything measure up perfectly and line up perfectly. I love uh, painting buildings that have, you know, a little bit of a lean to them. It doesn't bother me. I think it's kind of just sort of my style. It's a little on uh, the exaggerated side, but if you guys really want a perfectly straight house, you can measure and draw it out first prior to painting. I'm going to approach this freehand like I always do. And the brush I'm using is, what number is this one? A number 10 flat brush. This is by Royal and Lang Nickel. I have a whole set of these. I believe I got these from Walmart. And um, one of my lovely patrons was asking, and I forgot that they were, um, actually these ones are Lerman and Decor. Lerman Decor, they're not Royal and Lang Nickel. I had to look there for a second. A lot of brushes I do have are Royal and Lang Nickel, and those are equally just as good. But these ones are from Walmart, big set of them, under 20 bucks, and they're really, really good. So you don't have to spend a lot of money on your brushes, you guys. I'm just going to get this brush wet first and I'm going to come in with a uh, purple, a little bit of turquoise and white to start for the base of my house. And then um, that'll give me, that'll leave me with some cool um, natural looking shadows when I come in with my white. So the house isn't going to have sunlight hitting it because the sunlight's coming in, like behind the house. So our house is going to be in cool shadows and a cool white. That's why I chose titanium white. Um, Anyhow, I hope that makes sense to you guys. I'm going to take my white, purple, and blue turquoise, mix these up together. Now, I know that, look at how pretty these colors look. I know that purple and green, even purple and yellow, are complementary. So, it's always a good choice for adding these colors for shadows in your landscapes that have a lot of green or yellow, warm yellowy green. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take a little bit on the tip of my brush like this. And I'm going to start, I'm going to leave a little bit of white there. And I'm going to start coming over here on a diagonal line. We're just going to make our peak on the left side come down a little ways because we're going to be coming in the front with the other part of the house. So just like a triangle top like that. And then we'll paint it in. Pick 
up a little bit of white if you want. Start lighting the tone up a bit, making it a little bit lighter. Now it comes down right here. We'll add our door and windows after. I'm not going to worry about that yet. We're just going to paint our simple preschool looking house first with the shapes, squares and, and triangles and rectangles. Let's mix up a little bit more color here. And we will have some stairs somewhere in here. I'm just going to add a little bit of white, softening that up. And then we're going to have, I'm just going to add a little bit more white here. It looks like our house is kind of floating, doesn't it? We're going to fix that. Take more white. And you can turn your brush this way if you want and just do create like lots of little lines. Or you can turn it this way and make them thicker. So it's up to you. You know, it can be a little bit challenging to paint all those little lines without them looking lopsided. You can do it really quickly and kind of cheat by using wisp fan brushes or even just a fan brush. Okay, and then we're going to come right here. And with our next, just got a little bit of white here for separation, a little bit extra. And then our next sloped roof. Okay, and then down. So we've got our square here. Back and forth. It's the easiest way to fill it in until you get right about here. <laughs> Time to mix up some more color. So we're going to have our stairs and we'll just add dark layer first right here and dark line right there. You can add a little bit of that hunter green in there too. We're going to add some foliage in front of the house here. So now it'll be set back in this landscape rather than looking like it's in front, kind of just floating. Okay, clean brush. I'm gonna take my white now 
and I'm going to pull across first. Sometimes it's nice when your brush kind of splits apart like this. You guys can see that. My camera's going to focus. Um, that way you can create all those little lines. If you want to add siding on your house, but you can go back and forth like that too. And if you're having trouble adding, having your white show up, you just want to take some time to dry your painting off first. It would be a lot easier. I just have this sort of like post here on the side. And our white line here for the porch and then a few little steps down here once it dries I can add a little bit more I'm gonna make the roof lines a little bit thicker Line right there, and right underneath here, we'll have another little roof above our front porch. I'm just going to get my basic lines in here before I dry this off and then come in with uh, my white that's going to stand out a lot more. I'm going to just take a little bit of water on my brush. Should I just help loosen that paint out of my brush? Because my brush is starting to, to dry. I really don't want to ruin it. Okay, so I'm just going to give this a really quick dry and then we'll come in with the next layers. Okay, so now that I've dried this off we can come in and add some more so I'm just gonna go over I don't care if I go over those roof lines because I'm gonna go over top of those it's easier to do this part first and then go over top of the roof lines after Now it's a little darker in here because it's in more in shadow.
So because we started with a darker underpainting, it doesn't matter if we go over these areas, they're still going to show through. Unless we applied layers and layers of straight white over them. Okay, so I'm going to take thick white now. Put a water drop there. Let me just go over that. We want to make these equally as wide. And just do your best, you know, you don't have to worry too much about making everything exact. Just try to enjoy the process. It's all gonna look pretty once it's all done. The whole painting will come together, you'll see. Just adding a little line there so we're making them into A's. Okay, so we're going to add quite a bit of white right here for the next little roof line for our little covered porch. We'll have a little post there, a little post here. So I'm just going to take off. I was going to bring these down a little bit lower, but I'm going to keep that back there. We're going to have the foliage in the front. So we'll just go back over with a little bit of that green and purple. And then I'll take my brush and sweep over. I'm going to add those stairs. I'm going to add a little rectangle here for our door and I'm using a little bit of my hunter green and purple I'm going to add a few windows in here. Some across the top. Now the paint underneath is still a little bit wet. Sneak a little window in there. We'll add three rectangles here. Oh, I'm having fun with this painting. 
I hope you guys are enjoying this one too. I'm just going to add a little bit of white, just slide in my brush to get the very end of it loaded. We'll add some trim on the top and the sides. Add a little landing there and then some steps. And then, of course, we're going to have this one in here. Now, an easier way of making three windows, or four windows, actually, we're going to have four on this side, is just by doing a big chunk first and then separating it with white trim after. So we'll break it up into four after. And if that doesn't make sense, it will in just a minute. I'm going to rinse my brush out so I've got a little bit of that purple greenish color. I'm just going to add a little bit more of a shadow here. more of a shadow right inside there and then just under the roof line here a little bit on either side and then under that roof line so all these little shadows are really important you want to add them And then just soften so it just gradually starts to blend in and then I'll take more white again until we get that really nice clean bright white start adding some trim around the windows so just frame those windows with nice bright white and then one two three lines
going to make these ones a little bit thicker. I'm just rinsing my brush out in between because sometimes I'm picking up a little bit of, just because I'm picking up a little bit of the um, purpley green window paint color underneath. And then I'm going to go right through and then add some skinnier lines. Now, if I make them a little bit too thick, I can just come back here and make sure that I have three thicker lines to separate each of those windows. Okay, and then we're gonna go around and frame this window. We'll do two lines. going to fix this because I accidentally had my finger in there and it was still wet. Just want to tidy up the corners of the house here. So pointy and then flat. So it comes to a point there and then you just have, here this will make more sense, flat right here. So yeah, I can just take a little bit of time um, when adding these details, but it's actually quite relaxing, I find, and it makes me slow down, especially when I'm having one of those busy, busy days. It's nice to work on something that needs a little bit more concentration and patience. So these columns or pillars go right up and meet that roof line. Okay, now I'm going to come along the bottom here. When I'm loading my brush, I don't know if you guys are picking up on this, but I keep trying to show you my palette when I'm loading it. I have it on. I'm just loading the very tip of my brush because that's the only part of the brush that I want to be using. That'll help you get those nice thin lines.
And we can add a little window in here. Just make a little square inside of the top portion of your door. And then a little cross inside. And we can't forget about these windows up here. To add a little bit more white to the top, actually around the whole window itself. I want to go over this frame and make it a little brighter. And then we can add our thinner window frames and design inside. I'm going to add just a little bit of shadow right above the window, taking a bit of white, water, purple, and green. That's also going to make my window stand out a little bit more. Take a little bit of white. And just go right above there. I think this house is pretty cute looking already. We still have a big tree to add. And a little bit more shadow right under here. And above that roof line, see, it just makes everything stand out a little bit better. I'm just going to add a little bit of a shadow right underneath the frame on that window. Actually, it wouldn't hurt to add a little bit on all of them. It'll just make them show up a little bit better. Got a little wonky and lopsided with that one. We can just sweep it off. tree in as well. And I'm going to add a little bit of white here along the path. Be a little burnt pathway. Just been looking at lots of, um, I'm just kind of make a grayish color here with my green, purple, and white. Looking at lots of beautiful photos of homes and it's kind of inspiring. What I'm doing here. So I kind of just take all those little things, store them in my mind, and <laughs> and bring them into my paintings. It's 
So one thing that I think would be really neat, I'm just going to add a little, see it feels like it's a little bit sloped right down here. So I'm just going to bring this side up a little bit higher with some white. And then I'm going to clean up the bottom. <laughs> it's a lot of correcting and going back. You, I have to show you guys all this because um, it is normal. A lot of you guys might think that, oh, I'm always, you know, making mistakes and I have to keep going over. Yeah, well, that's definitely normal. We all have to. Um, but uh, I think that it would be neat to add a red door. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to just spur of the moment here, but I think it's going to be really nice. I'm just adding a little bit more shadow back here. And I'm gradually just going to take a little bit off, add a little bit of blue, purple, blue, and white. There we go. Then I'm going to do my window trim. Yeah, I usually paint a lot quicker than this, but I just, it's Sunday today and I just feel a little slower, a little a bit more like taking my time. And of course, sharing it with you guys, filming it. So you all get a chance to paint along with me to this one. I think it's a really fun one. So before I add the red on the door and my tree, I'm just going to come in here, add a little bit more purple. Now these lines up here are a little bit more crooked than I'd like, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm going to wait till the painting's all done and then I'll decide then if it's still bugging me. Uh, then I'll come back and, and, and finish it. So I'm going to take a little bit more white. Add a bit more white here to the front of the house. And I'm going to add my red door with um, a number two, some min like a mini filbert brush. So any small brush, I'm going to use a crimson red. I've got way too much here, but I just want to make sure you guys can see it. A little bit of crimson red. I want it to be a really uh, rich red, not neon red. So I'm going to come in over top of the purple. I like that. And that's all I'm going to do is just have a red door. Now, for those of you that are like, where's the door handle? I'll add a little door handle, but it is so far away that I don't know if you're really going to see it, but we'll add a little dab there, a little bit of white dab of purple, and then, and then some white. And I'm just going to try and use this brush to add A little bit of white around the door.
Now I'm going to come in with some bushes at the base of the house and we'll just tuck that house in there and make it look a little bit more nestled in. Now I've got a few small mop brushes that I'm going to use. Well, I might use more than one, um, but I've got this one here. So any kind of mini brush, small brush, you can use a filbert if you don't have one of these. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to take some purple and green, hunter green, and I'm going to start tapping right down here. Okay, now already that's really helping to make this house look like it's in the painting, within the landscape, in the more in the distance. And I'll take a little bit of light olive green. I can mix that with uh, the purple too, and we get some beautiful olive warm green tones in here. Let me take a little bit more of the olive green and start adding some highlights. And I need to add a little bit of white there for it to show up. Makes a big difference. I'm just going to go back to my little flat brush and add a line right here. So the base of the stairs, we see where it, where it ends and lines up with underneath those windows and the landscaping. For my tree, I'm going to be using my number one round brush. I'm going to get it a little bit wet and I'm going to take my warm yellow and my purple. Maybe a little red in there too. A little bit more water in my brush so that I can Pull that paint out easier. I'm going to add the tree coming from, I think, right about here. So this bush is in front of it. It's going to be a real old tree with lots of character. We're going to bring one big branch part of the tree going up there. Lots of movement and flow to it. And then we're going to have another one coming up right over the house. Don't be afraid. This is what's going to really set that house back even farther and add To this painting you can get really special bring this down a little bit thicker see it's gotta it's gotta make sense where it's getting lower down or going lower down it can't be too narrow it has to gradually get 
thicker or thinner. So thinner going out and then gradually thicker down in here. Okay, so now we can start adding. You really want to twist and pull and then get a little scoop on the tip of your brush. Just want to mention that. I want to start adding some smaller branches off of these larger ones. One that's a little bit thicker right here. I love adding these big trees to these landscapes. Okay, so it's mostly in silhouette, but I just want to add a little bit of white, neon yellow warm into that purple mixture, sort of a caramel color. and just have a little swirl here and there. Just kind of braid it and twist it in there for a hint of highlights. Or not even highlights, but just like a little bit more visible color on that tree. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of foliage around the tree, the base of the tree, and a little bit more from the top. Uh, I'm going to take my purple and light olive green again. Maybe with a little bit of turquoise, blue turquoise in there. Make it a little bit more interesting, add some cool tones, cool shadows, okay, a little bit more olive green, and the turquoise. Yeah, just a little bit right in here I think is kind of pretty. And I'm just going to lift this bar up so I can get the top of the canvas. I'm going to use a little bit more of that olive green and purple with just the tiniest amount of uh, the blue turquoise. And we'll bring over some leaves and vines here and treetops in the foreground. Well, yeah, in front here. Give us a little bit more sense of depth. I'm going to add a little bit of turquoise olive green, a little bit of white. And a little bit more cool tones on the grassy area here for the shadows. A little bit more purple in with that. And we'll start 
building up to our uh, fence, little fence, pit, white picket fence that we're going to have here, of course. So just kind of blocking in some color right now. That I think would be really beautiful. Turquoise and purple. Little bits here and there that are going to kind of peek through. Take just a little bit of purple on my smaller brush, my mini filter brush here. And just add a little bit of that in there. So I think that'd be really beautiful. Okay, and then back over to my flat brush, light olive green. Just gonna, gonna tidy this bottom up here. I'm gonna use a number six uh, little flat brush and I'm going to start the fence. I'm going to do a board going through, cross closer to the top of the fence, and I'm going to take a little bit of white, blue, and purple. <clears throat> because we do have some shadows going on, right? Same with the house. Um, so a little bit of, again, white, blue, and purple. And I'm just going to go Right about here. And add the line. There might be another board on the bottom, but we're not going to see it because let's just kind of line this up because we'll have some bushes down on the bottom. Okay, now I can take some white, a little bit of that purple blue mixture, and we're going to add a little dab here and a little dab here. For our posts. come back inside with a little bit of white and then lower down we're going to start adding our little fence posts so I'm just going to take that bluey purple mixture white Not going to worry too too much about making everything really even. And if anything starts to look a little bit too, a little bit too thick, I can just come in here. I 
and thin these out a little bit, but we are going to be adding some little bushes in the front. Love a little white picket fence. Okay, now we'll start working on the other side. Just gonna make these a little bit bigger. Add a bit of white on the top. So I've got quite a few, I've got a nice collection of houses and uh, cottages, cabins. I'm going to be making, well, by this time you're watching it, I might have a playlist already. So if it's something you guys enjoy doing and you want to learn some more, um, you might want to check that playlist out. So I'll have a link down below and you'll find lots of different ones to choose from and different seasons as well. So I'm just going over some of these with a little bit more white. So we've got that combination, that nice, soft, almost like a periwinkle for our shadows. And then some white over top. And it's a cool white, like I mentioned before. So it gives us this nice, um, cool shadow for our white picket fence. Like we don't have the sun on it, right? The sun is back there. Just want to make sure that these aren't see-through and we're not seeing that board through them. Okay, now we can come in with the final touch for this painting and it's just going to be a little bit of bushes, a few bushes down here at the bottom. So I'm going to take a little bit of green, olive green, purple, and blue turquoise and I'm just gonna tuck these little fence boards right down there. And you can bring some bushes up a little bit higher if you want 
You can add whatever you want to your fence. Again, I don't want anything looking see-through, so I'll just make sure that I tap over here. Now a nice little touch is to take a small flat brush or filbert brush and a little bit of any kind of green you want, a little bit of white. I just want to have it mostly on the tip of my brush. And you could add some little ferns in the foreground. So just little pulls like this. They're kind of the same as painting um, palm leaves. So depending on how much you want them to stand out, if you really want them to show up really bright and vivid, then you might need a darker underpainting or add some more white like I'm doing here. A little bit of the blue turquoise in there is pretty too. So I'll just do a, a little line and then pull and tap, or just tap. You'll get the feel for it and the hang of it as you practice. to add some other things in this painting. I've got lots of, um, I need a little bit more white in there. I've got a lot of paintings like this that have climbing roses over the fence, but sometimes it's nice just to have just foliage, you don't always need flowers. And this way, the door, the color on the door really stands out because there's so much green going on and it's not competing with any other colors, any reds or pinks, you know, here in the foreground. So that red door just really you really notice it. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit more white, olive green. And last little bit of neon yellow cool here. And just go back over the either side like we had originally done before. A little bit of blue, purple. Just for some more shadows.
And one last thing, a little bit more green and purple. We'll just bring down a few little taps and dabs. A little bit lower here, just to give us a sense of how big this tree is. Okay, well, I'm going to call this painting all done. This was so fun to paint. Thanks so much for taking the time to join me and painting along with me today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more. And if you'd like to make a donation and help support my channel, you can click the link below. It'll take you to Patreon. You'll receive some wonderful benefits over there, including some amazing exclusive tutorials just for patrons and longer versions of other tutorials you see here on YouTube. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you again soon in another video. Bye.